Welcome to my channel, I'm Aaron Rutten, and today we're going to learn how to trace in Krita. Tracing is a fantastic way to improve your drawing skills, practice composition, and create artwork from a reference. Let's dive in. First things first, you'll need a reference image. You can use your own photos, stock images, AI-generated images, or even my exclusive reference images available for members on my website at aaronrutten.com. I'll link you to that in the video description. I'll choose this photo of a yellow tang, which I generated with Adobe Firefly. I'll put a link to this image in the video description. This is available to free members of my Patreon. The image needs to be large and high resolution enough to see the details in it. A low resolution image will just look blurry if you try to enlarge it. If I show you a low resolution version of this yellow tang, you can barely make out the fin ridges and other features. If you can't see it, you can't trace it. But also keep in mind that your artwork might not need to be super high resolution, so just aim for a medium sized reference image or larger. Once you have your reference, open Krita and create a new canvas. It's a good idea to base your canvas size on the aspect ratio of your reference image to ensure everything fits nicely. You don't have to make the canvas match the photo because you may want to place your subject somewhere else, like on a background or alongside other subjects but in this case, I only want to focus on the yellow tang. Overall, the yellow tang is wide, not tall, so I'll create a wide canvas. I'll just make it simple and choose the design screen 4x3 template, but you may want to choose something that is larger if you plan to print your work. The bottom most layer is the background. I'll name it that. Next, I'll select a light gray and choose Edit Fill with Foreground Color so you can better see the drawing in my recording. It's also easier on the eyes than a bright white canvas. I have customized my workspace a bit. Any of these panels can be found in Settings Dockers. I'll be working back and forth between the artistic and wide gamut color pickers. You can customize the grid to show more or less colors. I want to make sure I have a range of yellow and orange that will cover the fish color palette. You may also notice these custom brushes I created. I will come back to that. You can follow along with the default Krita brushes too. I'll zoom out a bit and let's bring in our reference. You can choose Layer, Import Layer, but it may be easier to drag and drop the image onto the canvas and choose Insert as New Layer. I'll select the Transform tool and hold Shift while dragging the corner of the image to enlarge it so it fills more of the canvas. Holding Shift keeps the image from squashing. I'll also position it slightly southeast of center. Next, I'll name the layer reference. I'll drag the opacity slider until the image becomes fainter. You may want to play with this to find the right opacity while you are tracing. In my case, around 40% is enough to still see the important details I want to trace, but also allows me to see the pencil lines I will be drawing. I'll zoom in to show more of the fish on the screen. You can do this with touch gestures, the plus and minus keys on your keyboard, or the overview panel. Next, select one of the blank layers in the Layers panel. Name this layer Sketch. This is where we will start our tracing. I'll drag this above the reference layer if necessary. Let's save our progress so far. It's best to save your working documents as the native KRA format. I'll create numbered versions so we can see our progress. There are two primary objectives for tracing. First, you might want to use it to help you get the correct shapes and proportions of your subject. The rest of the illustration would be based on the sketch, but would include much more detail. This sketch would be temporary and discarded when it's no longer needed. Second, you might want to skip the sketch and just ink right over the reference to create line art. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to get started with both methods. I'll select the brush tool. For sketching and inking, I highly recommend using a stylus since it offers much more accuracy than your finger or a mouse. As for the brush to use, I have an excellent sketching pencil in my Krita starter pack, available at aaronrutten.com. Of course, you can also use any of the default Krita brushes as well. There are some pencils in the sketch category. Start lightly sketching over your reference image, focusing on the main shapes and lines. If you plan to use your tracing as a starting point for a painting, you only need to indicate where the details will be, not draw the details entirely. For example, the fish scales are very fine and intricate, and I could spend hours drawing them with this pencil. 
but if I ended up painting over the sketch with paintbrushes, all of that previous detail would be wasted. So to clarify, we are making a temporary sketch here, not a finished drawing yet. Eventually I plan to use a line art style with ink outlines, hatching, and color fills. So I will only need to indicate the general shapes of the fin and scale patterns. If it's hard to see certain details, you can place a duplicate of your reference image on a separate device like a phone or computer screen. Or you can increase the reference opacity as needed. And don't worry about drawing the wrong lines. You certainly can undo, but that will waste a lot of time. It may be more efficient to clean up the unwanted lines with an eraser near the end of the sketch. There is the eraser mode, or you can select from eraser brushes. Once your sketch is complete, go back to the layers panel and hide your reference layer by clicking on the eye icon next to it. This allows you to see the sketch more clearly. You may want to create a second sketch layer, dim the opacity, and refine your sketch. I don't think that's necessary, so I won't bother. If you are satisfied with your sketch, it's now ready to turn into a finished illustration. You can choose from a number of art styles, genres, and mediums. I can't possibly cover all of those in this video, so I will just choose one that is simple and fairly common. I'll save as to save another version. I want to use this sketch to make a line art drawing and fill it with some color and other details. I'll create a new layer above the sketch layer and name it inking. I'll also dim the opacity of the sketch so I can see more of my ink lines. Next, choose an inking brush that you like. My smooth pen works great, but there are also lots of default brushes in the ink category. This brush works best if it has smoothing applied to slow down the stroke. You can adjust this to your liking in the tool options. I'll make sure to ink on the inking layer, Take time and ink over your sketch, creating crisp, smooth lines. You need not follow the sketch exactly if you feel the lines are an improvement. I only want to focus on the main outlines, not any fine details. You can lower the smoothing to color in any dark areas that need to be black, like the pupil. You can use the eraser mode to clean up your lines as well. I'll create another layer and name it Hatching. Now we'll use a smaller brush to add some finer details on the fins and body. These lines help show the form and contours of the subject. You can place these in areas that are in light shadow. Take your time and don't rush through this. You want this hatching to improve the illustration, not hurt it. Use undo as needed. I'll save another copy, then add some stippling on a new layer to indicate the scales. I can also make a few impressions of overlapping scales with curved shapes. I have a video you can watch with some tips and techniques for inking, so that's all I'll say about it in this tutorial. As you are working, keep an eye on your work in the overview panel. This will help you to see it both up close and from a distance. You can better visualize the patterns in the line work this way. You can use the erase mode to cut into your ink to create negative space too. It would be difficult to exactly match the reference image, so I am just trying to get the impression of the features. After you've finished inking, you can hide your sketch layer to reveal just your clean line art. Looks great, doesn't it? Let's save another iteration. Next, I'll give you an overview of how to add color to a line art illustration. This is another topic I cover in detail in a separate video, so have a look at that if you want to learn more. I'll create a new layer, drag it below the inking layer, and I'll name it Coloring. There are two main ways to color. First, you can use the Paint Bucket tool. Set the tool options to fill regions from merged layers. This will allow you to use the line work as a boundary for the fill while placing the fill on a separate layer. You can also grow the fill by four pixels so that it goes beneath the line work. This will only work on closed shapes, so be sure to close any gaps on your line work layer. For more flexibility, I recommend separating different colors onto their own layers. This way you can easily adjust individual colors with filters or by painting over them. Since the outer fin membranes are a little translucent and make sort of a greenish color, I will separate those onto their own layer. I'll also separate the eye color, the white spots, the shadow, and the blue background. I'll fill each layer with a color. It doesn't have to be the final color, we can adjust these. Some layers I will need to paint by hand. 
As you can see, not everything is filled. The second method would be to hand color everything with a brush. However, the paint bucket saves a lot of time, so you may as well get the bulk of the color done with that first. Use a hard edge brush at full opacity. The smooth pen works well for this, but you'll want to reduce the smoothing to make it more responsive. Take some time to fill in the gaps in the remaining colors. Hold Alt to sample the existing colors. Next, I'll zoom out and select the background. I'll use an airbrush like my soft airbrush to add a soft gradient that goes from aqua to indigo. This gives the impression of water. After laying down your colors, you might have some color that went outside the lines. No worries, use the eraser tool to clean up any stray marks. Finally, let's add some shading. Tap on each colored layer and enable alpha lock. That's the checker icon to the right of each layer. This allows you to draw or paint only within the existing pixels of that layer. In other words, it works a lot like a stencil. First, correct the colors to get them to better match the reference. It may be easier just to use the wide gamut color picker. I'll use the soft airbrush. Make the yellow skin color a little shifted toward orange and reflect some blue onto the belly. Color in the foreground fin with the darker skin color and add back in the yellow stripe you can see through it. I'll darken up the gills as well. Continue adding darker or lighter colors to create shadows and highlights. This will give your artwork more depth. Feel free to enable and disable alpha lock as needed. I'll add some yellow to the fin ridges layer next. Control click on the fin membranes layer to make a selection that will keep your paint from spilling outside. Deselect the selection. Then next, use the soft airbrush on the fin membranes to make a gradient from yellow to aqua to make them look translucent. For the tail, you can paint the green and yellow features together on the body layer. I'll keep adding different colors, trying to somewhat match what I see in my reference, but I'll also use my own creative choices. I can also add some realism by painting a shadow on a separate layer set to the multiply blend mode. Show your sketch for a moment to get the shape and position. I'll reduce the opacity to blend it in. You can blend the edges to soften them using diffuse blur or a similar grainy blender. I'll have the shadow be more subtle than it is in the reference. If your colors are a bit off, feel free to use the filters to correct them. You can add textures within your colors using brushes like my chalk or sponge. There are lots of default texture brushes in Krita as well. As we near the end of the illustration, it would be a good time to take a break and come back later. This gives you a better chance of noticing mistakes. Save a copy of your work as a PNG and look at it later on a phone or another device. Make note of anything you see that needs correction. Be sure to directly compare it to the reference. I'd also recommend studying additional references to give you a broader understanding of your subject. Just because you are tracing doesn't guarantee your illustration will look accurate. To draw accurately, you need to be able to identify where you made mistakes. I can definitely see some areas I'd like to reshape a bit. Since there are so many layers to change, it would be more efficient to merge all the layers together and then distort everything at once. I can right click on any layer and choose flatten image. Next, I'll select my distort brush. There is a default equivalent for these brushes. I'll push the eye outward to make it a better circle. Next, I'll improve the roundness of the pupil using the pinch brush. I'll also add some jaggedness to the edges of the fins with distort. This does make the line work a little blurry, so you may want to touch that up. No one will be viewing this up close, so there's no need to get too obsessed with making it perfect. I'll add a little more sharpness to the eye color as well. And last, I'll use an HSV filter to make the fish more yellow. I think I overdid it by making it too yellow-orange. The footage has been sped up quite a bit, but this has been about two hours of work so far. The drawing looks pretty good to me, so I will stop here. As you can tell, tracing was only a small part of this process. I am fully capable of hand drawing this yellow tang without tracing, but it's already tedious enough to ink and color, so why not save time where I can? That's more time I can use to make more art. Don't feel bad about tracing if that's how you want to draw. 
Once you're happy with your artwork, it's time to save it. Keep your original with layers as a KRA file, and save as to make copies for print and web use. Choose JPEG, PNG, or WebP for posting to the web. And there you have it, that's how you trace in Krita. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you're interested in taking your Krita skills to the next level, be sure to check out my full Krita training course available at AaronRutten.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.